Thank you, uh, Quincy, for coming down, and Thank you. Peter Concilio, and all of us who we were chatting, we all overcame uh, some odds to, to make it here, <laughs> and I'm glad that we have, and it's, uh, I won't go into the details, but they're, they've, uh, I'm glad we're all here. We're, the first song we're going to play is by Charles Mingus, that's uh, called Peggy's Blue Skylight, and Charles Mingus, uh, sometimes is, I was talking to Quincy about this, that Sometimes it, uh, because he's such a powerful person and a force of his expression, is easy to uh, just notice that. Uh, you, you can overlook uh, what, what a great musician he is, that has, you know, has musical ideas. You just think, well, oh my God, that's so powerful. And, and, and if, you, if you think about that when you go over and listen to some Mingus, that it, and it, that he does almost off the top of his head. He comes up with great musical ideas, but they're often overlooked. It's Peggy's Blue Skylight. Uh, is this, uh, had came out of an experience uh, helping somebody uh, move things out of her apartment who had a skylight. And that's what uh, comes from a situation, and we're going to do our best to play it. it it's uh, like a lot of Mingus's stuff. It it has a very orchestral kind of. Um, Concept to put it to his his concept is orchestral. I would have to say even though he played bass, but he also played piano, and his piano playing is very orchestral. So that's my uh, so we'll start, and I'll start. Get my glasses. <laughs>
keep going along in the, with a song for Aaliyah called Donna Lee. <laughs> was uh, requested this song for a while. And uh, Donna Lee's a song that if you don't know Donna Lee, it, it's a song that uh, jazz musicians used to play to sort of to test how, um, how fast they could play and how much control. And, and we still do. <laughs> but I remember, I'm, I think I really I heard this song 50 years ago. And it, uh, and it was, it was a challenge then, and it's, um, it's still a challenge in a different way. But, uh, uh so we're going to, we're going to play it and, uh, see what we can make of it. All right. Despite, I forgot to say who it was by, it was, it's by, uh, Charlie Parker. But sometimes on, the the, uh, um, uh, on the music seat, sheets, it says Miles Davis, but then, uh, it, a lot of times, Miles Davis uh, grabbed control of um, other people's songs and put his name on it. <laughs> so, it's probably a Charlie Parker song, maybe. We don't have to. All right. Half, uh, you want to count it, Quincy? Or, or should I, I, should I, should I do it? Probably you guys been doing it, yeah.
funny. Nice set. The song holds up. <laughs> We're going to continue uh, with uh, compositions by Charlie Parker. This one uh, was written in the 1940s. I'm not sure what year. And it's probably interesting what year. And uh, It's called Now's the Time. And, it, and it's, uh, I never really gave it any political significance, but I read recently that uh, for a lot of blacks, it was uh, coming out of the service and realizing that things had changed and that now was the time to uh, have more uh, personal and political freedom. And which I, I didn't know the song had that connotation, but I, I read that uh, you know, on good authority that it, that it did. Uh, so, and oh, I like that. It has existential uh, philosophical implications as well, because now it's always, always the time that it is. And it's a time for uh, whatever isn't to uh, come ahead and go on and be. So we're, we're going to work on that. And uh, so we're going to play this song in a way that it's not usually played. And I won't describe it. Uh, we'll just, uh, I guess, because we don't really quite know. We're going to uh, feel it out, see how we can do. Uh, say it's just who goes first, I guess. Uh, do you want to, shall I go first? Okay. We'll play the tune. Let's play the tune in, in medicine twice. And I'll go first. And after that, uh, we'll see. Okay. Two.
Thanks. That was fun. That was a, that went in a way I didn't expect, which is always good. Mm -hmm. Jazz is all about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to play a, a tune that I wrote. It's called, uh, based on an old uh, spiritual, uh, the spiritual is sometimes called Go Down Moses. And it's, uh, uh, but it, I've called it the song, uh, so, and it was, sometimes it's called Let My People Go. But it, And I wrote this about three or four years ago, and, and I called it Let My People Groove. Let my people go isn't good enough. You know? <laughs> so that was um, that was the spirit there, and it takes on a whole other implications in today's world. But uh, it's got musical values, and hope we'll have fun playing it.
change the feeling a little bit. I wanted to do a ballad and I wanted also to do something that uh, you know, played on bass clarinet. Oh, that's great. I was going to say, I was just going to say something that will feature the clarinet. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Yeah. So, so good fun. for you to... Uh, <laughs> I hope you don't regret it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play the, so uh, the song, Do You Know What It Means to Miss New Orleans? Which is a song that I, I heard Jackie Byer play yeah. once in a concert. Room. All of a sudden, this is a great song. I don't know how to play this. And Louis Armstrong and the All Stars played it as a part of the regular repertoire for yeah decades and sang it. And it, and it can be a corny old song. But it, it can be profound. It <laughs> will be somewhere in, that, in the spectrum. <laughs> Do you know what it means? Do you want to count it or something?
Yeah. The next song is by it. I did some preparation for the song because I was talking to Peter. So he said, did you get into, into any of these songs when you rehearsed this week? And he said that it, uh, he liked uh, Booker's Waltz was one that he really liked a lot. And it's one that, that I got into also. And I realized that probably a lot of people don't know who Booker Little is. So I, I brought some records. Now we can pass them around. Oh, nice. Look at that. We wow. can look at his picture and browse. Oh, and, uh, take him home, listen to him in that uh, room. <laughs> <laughs> he said, unfortunately for uh, all of us, Booker Little died when he was 23. Oh, my God. He, somehow he rec managed to do a lot of recording in that period of time with Max Roach and with uh, Eric Dolphy and others. Interesting. You know. Booker Irvin, and he composed a lot of music and did a lot of arranging. And uh, he got a, he must have got a head start. You know? <laughs> and uh, so we're going to play a song of his that has made it into, almost into the standard repertoire, but not quite called, and it's called Booker's Waltz. And I'm going to do our best to share our enjoyment of this song and it's got a nice introduction
How's the temperature? Is it too, uh, did you open the door to heat up or down? Everybody okay? Good. Good. Me too. Uh, the next, uh, okay. I'm going to play another composition that, that I wrote a number of years ago. When, when Quincy went to Hampshire College, he met this uh, kid who was, uh, I bet you met him, uh, from Palestine, uh, Anas Malur. And uh, when he, uh, had, he died in an incident that had nothing to do with politics. But uh, he was a wonderful, surprising person. And uh, not the way he appeared. And full of, um, I think, energy and surprise. And I met him at a party at, at Hampshire, and he just... Um, he told me he missed his family and he'd like to go back and see him, but he was afraid he wouldn't be able to come back. He wouldn't be able to leave once he went there. So he half in just, or half at most, of uh, said he adopted me as his American father, which I thought was a great compliment. And, and I, I, a lot of uh, American kids don't don't talk to older people oh, very openly or at all. So I, I admire this kid really did. It made an impression on me. And... Uh, and then, unfortunately, uh, he left. And uh, uh, but it, it called forth a song. And like a lot of these songs, they, they afford the opportunity to reflect uh, to, uh, on a person and on how you felt at the time and that sort of stuff. And uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. One, two, blues for an ass. It's called one.
Okay, I just wanna, I forgot you're gonna do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Brad. Okay. Yeah, we'll, getting deeper into the program, we're gonna play a song called Spiritual by uh, by John Coltrane. And, and it's from, uh, I think it's I think 1964, 1965. And Eric Dolphy was in his group then and was influencing him to uh, step outside of the r role that he had been playing as a more conservative but aggressive player. And uh, I think it was an important moment, an important song. And the, the spiritual comes from, uh, I think Coltrane found a, a, a song called, do you know this thing? It's, a, it's an actual song in a book by James Weldon Johnson. Uh, a, a collection of Negro spirituals. Uh, so it's not just any spiritual. It has something with a particular song that he liked a lot. But it has uh, implications that are spiritual because he, he took the approach of Indian music in this song and where, where he just uh, used one long harmony uh, and no, uh, no chord changes. So no harmonic development. So just you're out there. And what do you do then? So, so in the Indian music, it's a, it's a chance for rhythm and melody to shine, but also for a, uh, any spiritual implications you could find, there's the opportunity to, to reach for them. So we'll do our best to show you some of that and some other things I didn't mention.
spirit of that too much, but it's uh, those of you who have a good view of the bass might have noticed that Peter's not using a standard bass bow <laughs> since he, uh, he left it home. And, and I had this uh, child's cello bow, and it, and I, which I had saved for some reason. And it, here it is in the surface, and it played, sounded great. <laughs> So that, that might be a, a good number to end on, or do you feel me? How do you guys feel? You want to do one more? Shall we? Is the audience okay? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. We've got uh, <laughs> this. Louis Armstrong says, "Some this, someday you'll be sorry. <laughs> yeah, you may be sorry if we so we'll play another long song." This is a, a, a tune I, another tune I wrote called Lonely Man. And it's based on a, a song uh, by Ornette Coleman called Lonely Woman. And it's uh, in the style of uh, Ornette Coleman. It's like we were just talking about the Coltrane style of using Indian music. And, uh, and Coleman's style was not averse to that, but not consciously in the same mode at all. And he didn't like to use harmony either. So he just didn't use a piano player very much. So he didn't, and he didn't use a drone system. He had just a great bass player and a drummer, and he relied more on rhythm and, and melody. And so this song is uh, inspired by that take, and then the feeling of a like the, the feeling of a lonely man. And we're going to try to uh, play the unusual combination of melodica and clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> for, your, for your listening pleasure. <laughs> and I'll let you sort of lead it if you wanted to repeat. Or okay. This is a song, the, the written form of this is very open, so that it has some things that it's just like repeat with a question mark. And I, I think you should lead it, Dad, because we didn't, cause we didn't I sort of, I think you should lead it. Just as it is, or? Well, because I don't know what to do. When do we move them out in this section? Okay, well, okay. okay. So we'll just figure it out. I'll follow you. Okay. You can take the first solo. Or... Okay. Okay.
have had this hearing loss this week, but I thought everybody played really well. <laughs> and I appreciate the. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> I couldn't resist saying that. But it's. Uh, I thought everybody did play really well, and and I thought everybody listened really well, and I I, I thank you for uh, your attention, and uh, it was fun fun to play the the whole set. And, uh, I'm appreciative of every person that was here. So thank you. 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 Tragic, and Good. more uh, every day. <laughs> so and we're uh, uh, happy and honored to have you with the group, and Thank come you. back and do it again. Thank you.